Nicole Scott here from Mobile Geeks, and today I'm going to be unboxing the Meizu MX4 Pro. This is the new phablet high-end smartphone from Meizu. I was at the launch event in Beijing where I got to pick up this beauty, but let's just dive into the box, which houses the gorgeous handset. So there's some cardboard here, more than better. I talks about the fingerprint scanner, sound is a big thing for this device, and then there's Fly Me 4 which this is actually my very first uh, Meizu phone, so I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the fun stuff that I've really kind of started loving about this device. So it comes with some warranty cards over here. There's a micro USB. This is a European charger. And then uh, the earphones aren't included, but they did announce a new HD uh, earbud to go along with this, but I guess... If you want them, you're going to have to pay. So now that we're done with the box, let's just turn this on. Now I have been using it. I could not help myself, but uh, while it's booting up, let's just take a quick walk around the system. So the top obviously has the power button. We have, there's some marks for antennas there, headphone jack, volume rocker. Around the bottom, we have the little slot to remove the back. You can see that there is a non-removable battery with a 20 megapixel camera that is capable of some pretty amazing things. I'll get to that in just a second. There's a two-tone flash and there's your micro SIM card slot. There's no SD card slot on this device, which is kind of a bummer. So there's your speaker there and then there's nothing around the side over there. Now let's see if this is booted up. I've already installed my fingerprint. There we go. So this is actually my first time with the uh, FlyMe UI. So this comes with the uh, FlyMe 4. Point... It comes with Android 4.4 and it's a uh, FlyMe uh, OS 4.1, which I have to admit, guys, I am a rather big fan of. I mean, it's little things like I can just swipe down anywhere on the display to get the notification bar down. I don't need to go all the way up, which I think is just great if I... Um, ooh. If I slide up from the side, these are my recent tasks, I can just close those off. Um, but looking at the display itself, if we just head into the gallery, maybe look at oof, some of these awesome photos that I took with the 20.5 megapixel camera. Now one thing that you should note about this, uh, I got told that this is actually the Sony Exmor sensor that Sony was using. So Meizu was actually able to pick up a bunch of these um, for their device, which isn't to say that it does a bad job just because it's the old one, because my goodness, I'm having some issues with the mismatch there. It takes some amazing photos. So let's just start here. Yeah, look at this. So this was my dinner last night. Look at the detail on this cake. Actually, I didn't have this cake. Most Taiwanese desserts, I think, are kind of gross. But, um, yeah, they're too fluffy. But look at that. Look at the detail on this. And up on the side. Now that's an upshot. <laughs> uh, here's some giant cookie. Mmm. Look at the detail on this. Then when it fades out, kind of what you expect. Crab claws. Look at the detail on that. Maisie did a killer job with this camera. I am... Totally impressed with this bun, right? See, it's 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 the lines when it goes to defocus that you can sometimes are like, oh, that looks crappy. It's so fuzzy, but they're really nice and crisp on here. The details just unbelievable. So this display is a 2K plus display. I think that it has great color saturation. If you put the viewing angles on that, nobody's watching anything gross on the train because everyone can see what you're looking at for sure with these amazing viewing angles. Really nice, and this is actually a new display for me. This is a, a negative LCD uh, display, which is kind of a new one, but I think that it has a good brightness. All right, so let's go back. Let's pull down this notification bar. So that was at full brightness. That goes down nice and low. So if you want to use this in bed so you, before you go to sleep, you aren't going to be you know, annoyed by how bright that is. Now, this is... Uh, a few interesting things are going on in here. So there's the flashlight right off the notification bar. There's a VPN, which I didn't realize is a normal thing to have installed 
on a lot of Chinese phones like for business or if you want to circumvent the firewall, all these things. But Meizu actually has an international version, so this does come with Google Play, and so far everything uh, seems to work quite nicely. So this is the Fly Me UI, right? There's no app section uh, to go in here. You can force four into the bottom there. Uh, if you want to go into personalize Chinese content only, exit. But there are some really great little touches. So they have this smart touch that essentially replaces the back button. Other specifications of the phone that I should probably go over. So I mentioned that this is a 2K plus display. So that is 2560 by 1536. Uh, this is an aluminum edge here. It feels so solid. And then uh, it's a plastic on the back, which I absolutely do not have a problem with. Now, under the hood, we have an Exynos processor, the 5430. Uh, so this is the big little configuration. So the four Cortex-A15s are going to be at 2 gigahertz, and then the uh, the little, so the, the power-saving cores, are Cortex-A7, and they are at 1.5 gigahertz. This is the same processor found in the Samsung Galaxy Alpha. So if... Well, we're just going by benchmarks that are already on the on the internet. This should come up below the high end of the Snapdragon 801, but in the same kind of range. This isn't going to be released on the market until December 6th. Oh, it's got a super narrow bezel along the side, uh, 2.8 millimeters, which is really nice and thin. Uh, the overall thickness of the device is... Oh, the one thing that makes me absolutely crazy about this device is that you can't access the settings from the notification bar. Why? Why? You have so many options. I mean, just take out VPN or Do Not Disturb or any of these other ones would be, would be something I could let go for settings up here in the notification bar. It drives me wild that uh, that's not a thing. I've only had this phone for uh, 18 hours Maybe I'll get used to it, I'm not sure. So there are a few familiar things, like you just kind of swipe down that's very color OS for changing how you go through. So manual, I think that they could update that icon to look a little less like male. But there's beauty, which I'll probably do later. Uh, light field, this is just depth focus. So it's just like background defocus, essentially. Nighttime, um, scan QR code. I think it's so nice they included that in their integration. Slow motion, we'll definitely be playing around with that because you know how much I love setting my hand on fire. Bit of A, and then there's a macro mode. Uh, if you double tap the display, it goes into a square. So that's like Instagram, all, through, all up in there. And then you can obviously uh, head into the, ca or the video camera and you can tap to focus as you're filming which is something that I wish that Sony would just do with their devices and their because I would just love that now you can add live filters on here if you are just such an Instagram freak that you need to know exactly what it looks like as you shoot lots and lots and lots of options built into the camera so this was just a very quick unboxing and first impressions and hands-on I'm going to get really deep into this device because this is my first Meizu and I have never had stuff like this before. They just have lots of nice little unique features. So I really feel like I need more time to dive deep into the features of this phone that I am so far a quite big fan of. So Nicole Scott here from Mobile Geeks taking a first impressions look at the Meizu MX4 Pro. Yeah.